Validating the heart of big data, which is the O'Reilly Strata Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. We're at Sean Connolly, who's the Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategy at Hortonworks, uh, on the Executive Management Team at Hortonworks, which is pioneering the big data, fast follower to Cloudera, really putting out the open source and fueling the open source movement around Hadoop. Sean, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, John. So, uh, so Hortonworks obviously uh, is growing like crazy since the Yahoo kind of step out or spin out, however it was classified, has been growing like crazy. You guys are funded by Benchmark, great success with your uh, data platform that you guys have been initiating, 100% open source business model, um, and really the credibility level is really high with you guys in the community for a variety of reasons. And, and so, you know, congratulations. Obviously we, we uh, cover the Hadoop Summit um, for you guys as well as Strata and Hadoop World here with theCUBE. So we're very intimate with what you guys are doing. So a um, lot of updates to, to share. So one, just tell, tell us through quickly update on what's going on with Hortonworks. Uh, as recent announcements, traction, et cetera. And then I really want to ask you, Dave and I want to have a conversation around the big splash by EMC Greenplum and Intel in particular, the two mo big money players coming into the industry, mm -hmm. EMC and Intel, uh, you know, throwing their weight around a little bit <coughs> and uh, you know, taking a little bit of different approach. Some are saying proprietary, we're saying open source plus, however you want to put it, they are attacking the marketplace in an aggressive way. To, uh, to get a position, and certainly called out Hive and uh, Impala specifically over the past announcement. So, update on, on Hortonworks, and sure. then we'll jump right in, talk about this, what SQL means in this new world. Sure, yeah, so the uh, past uh, nine months or so, in particular the last quarter or two, have really been accelerating, just from an industry perspective. Um, you know, one of the things at the last uh, Hadoop Summit in June, I, uh, we had Jeffrey Moore crossing a chasm there. Um, Market indicators are we're or on the right side of the chasm. Um, just mainstream brands um, that are you know actively uh, seeking out deployments. Um, they're more educated on what they want to accomplish. Um, so yeah. more concrete. So it's it isn't a kick the tires you know science project. Uh, there's beginning to get clarity and um, uh, sort of repeated uh, use case patterns. Um, in that space, I tend to sort of categorize things as refine, explore, and rich uh, use cases. Um, and so refine is sort of get it all in one spot, transform it, right, ship it to downstream uh, EDWs. So our partnership with Teradata fits into that and we're seeing that rinse and repeat pattern. The explore, frankly, is what a lot of the SQL stuff, the excitement on how do you interactive, you know, interactively, uh, you, know, uh, yeah. you know, get your hands around the data. And then uh, the enrich is really uh, how do you build intelligent applications, deliver, you know, uh, analytic models to online apps to influence behavior. Are, are those sequential? Um, so it, it's, you know, six, nine months ago, we saw them as sort of three different patterns. Um, right now, we're actually seeing it as you graduate from one to the next to the next, so it's actually a uh, crawl, walk, run mm -hmm. uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are, there's a connection. Well, why is that important? Um, and it gets to the, you know, at Hortonworks, one of the things we've been driving is the, uh, the yarn uh, aspects of the Hadoop 2 platform that actually have you know, a, a richer cluster operating system to support multiple workloads. So if you think of refine, explore, and rich, that's batch, interactive, and online. You want the platform, Hadoop, which most folks just think of it as, it's batch MapReduce, right? Yeah. It isn't, it's a broad platform that uh, spans batch, interactive, and online application needs increasingly, particularly as you plug things in. So, um, continue to innovate that platform forward so it can serve those uh, you know, higher speed uh, workloads is important, but do it in a good citizen way. So if you need data in a fast way, um, you're not going to monopolize the memory and CPU if you're also doing batch processing at the same time. So you need to coexist in a manageable way and that's really an area of focus. So, so Dave and I yesterday were talking about um, you know, top-down 
core and bottom up, organic and you know, top down. When they meet in the middle, every, all the magic happens. Real, yep. real accelerated market acceptance, growth, et cetera, on the product side. And, and really what's happening, and in, in, in we've seen it with Oracle on one hand, Oracle has the, the purpose-built infrastructure, uh, and then you got everyone else kind of open source, multi-vendor. Multi um, here what's interesting is you have um, EMC, um, and a lot of customers. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're new to the, to the business. They have a lot of enterprise customers, big customers uh, with storage. Um, and then you have the community innovating underneath. You have innovation coming up from the bottom up, which is an open source business model. And then you have EMC, which is kind of top down. Um, they're on a collision course, right? So we're, we're, we want to document that. So what's, what I found interesting about the EMC announcement was the software-based approach, no appliance. Um, that got good marks. Um, you know, aggressiveness aside, you know, they had that, that was, that was very positive. Um, same time, they have a lot of customers. So, proprietary has been kicked around. We're calling it open source plus. So, I want to ask you: Okay, where is this collision? Do you agree with that statement? And two, um, is that a short-term snapshot of a market they're just going to have to serve with the business intelligence, which makes a lot of sense from a business strategy standpoint? It's is it obviously different than what's going on in the community where apps need to be data aware, data as code, as we introduced this morning, a concept uh, called data as code, where you know the data itself is not just one data mart. So, mm -hmm. so you have an interesting kind of positioning here. How do you look at that? What's your point of view? And, and obviously, and if you can comment specifically about the top down, sure. bottom up. So uh, at Hortonworks, like I said, we're focused on that Hadoop platform for mainstream enterprise use cases. But a, a key part of our strategy was enabling it to interoperate with the ecosystem. Um, that was set very early on. So you mentioned EMC. I'll also mention Teradata. Right with their unified data architecture, Microsoft, right with their approach on integrating Hadoop into Azure, as well as with their SQL Server and BI tool, right? So, um, you know, it's yes, our focus is on enabling any and all of those types of use cases because that's what enterprises want, right? So, there's not really much religion around that. I think we all see that we want to make sure we accelerate the enterprise adoption of that, right? Um, so, so that's sort of first and foremost. Um, with that said, having been at JBoss and Red Hat and Spring and other places, um, as I like to say, the, uh, you know, the open source tide rises inexorably, right? So it, you know, it'll continue to get better and better and better. And so in the case of uh, you know, Interactive SQL, as an example, um, we've chosen to um, double down on the Apache Hive uh, community in order to make that solution, which operates at large scale, right, for operational batch processing, but to move that into human interactive uh, use cases where you can do visualization, ad hoc reporting, and those types of things. And we've gotten very um, strong reception from customers who already invested in it, as well as uh, uh, the uh, you know, Facebooks, uh, Microsofts, and others who are working in that community on wanting to um, roll up the sleeves and um, move it into that space. Because um, at the end of the day, it's been the de facto yeah. uh, SQL interface. And just one sort of final point, it's been the de facto SQL interface, but as I like to say, it's also, fortunately or unfortunately, been the uh, pinata that people yeah. beat up on, right? The, 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 um, <laughs> the and, kid in the schoolyard being bullied. Yeah, and you know, if you look at a lot of performance ca comparisons. I mean, so, they, so let's all, yep. for a second. So the kid in the schoolyard being bullied, yep. or the pinata, as you say, you know, the candy will open up. And, yep. and, and so was it warranted? I mean, what, what's your take on that? I see Greenplum saying the performance is significant, and mm -hmm. we have uh, you know, Donald Miner on Twitter, he's going to give us the data, on the benchmarks. I mean, what, I mean, they have numbers. How, how do you address that? So well, how, and Cloudera kind of agrees with you, sort of. <laughs> right, <laughs> yep, yep. So, we're trying to squint through that and understand exactly. the, the customers are too. So there's, there's, a, there's a couple ways you can look at it. Right now, uh, you know, Hive is used in you know, petabyte scale use cases, and you don't want to lose that, right? Um, mm, right? But what you want to do is for either the smaller data sets or for the more human interactive scenarios, make it faster, make it more responsive, get it down into the second response time. Some people use the term real time, I don't like that, because real time to me means sub-second machine to machine, but it is, it's human interactive uh, use cases, uh, number one. Number two, a lot of the performance uh, comparisons tend to configure Hive against just the plain text mode, which it totally supports, but it has optimized file systems that many of these new ones also have. 
So it's an apples to oranges comparison, fortunately or unfortunately, and we'll, we'll be uh, investing in that area. What's your message to the enterprises out there that have a relationship with EMC? Obviously, mm -hmm. EMC's position is pretty clear. They're targeting a market that's addressable in the data warehousing business intelligence market. It's SQL based, but there's a, there's a world beyond SQL, mm -hmm. uh, but EMC's putting the bridge, to, bridge on, uh, across their chasm, which is saying, hey EMC customers, cross with us. Right. Um, don't worry about anybody else, we got you covered. I mean, that's a, that's a credible message, you know, you know, assuming that the products can be delivered, but what's your take on that's viable? So, um, when you look at a next-gen data platform, SQL is an important use case, it's not the only use case, all right? Um, so there is a large um, population of users who want to interact in that way, but if you look at it, the original incarnation, it was like, you know, the SQL, the structured model didn't map well, and that's why MapReduce and Hadoop was generated in the first place. So the point there is, is and that was one of the things I saw on Twitter was like, are you know are people abandoning MapReduce? Heck no, right? Because it does a lot of the data refining at scale that's required. But you do need to appeal to these new folks. So you'll see the Green Plum solutions, the Aster solutions, right? The Vertica yeah. solutions all rally yeah, it around. It invites more people to the party, platform. right? I exactly. Mean, so so yeah. how does you mentioned uh, sort of Microsoft SQL Server before? How does it fit into this whole um, you know a uh, uh, model? Uh, mm -hmm. This this. Uh, the Hive piece of it. Can you kind of explain to, to customers how that all, all works? Sure, so, um, and it's a, a little bit of his, uh, maybe a little inside baseball, I'll talk about yeah, some of the new the technology. Yeah, right. um, so, uh, definitely SQL Server, it's, it's out there, and our recent announcement of Hortonworks Data Platform on Windows sort of helps you deploy a consistent uh, footprint if it's SQL Server and Hadoop in the same servers, you, you can have that as an option now, right? It wasn't previously an option. Mm -hmm. But if you look at their PDW uh, solution, they have this new poly-based layer, mm -hmm. right, that sits on top of that. That is a, that's sort of like a uh, universal translator for SQL that can sit on top of PDW and Hadoop, right, uh, a la Hive, and federate in queries so you can get data out of either system easily, right? Yeah. So the end user is oblivious to where the data comes from, from right? Okay. Um, but, so why is it important to speed up Hive in that scenario, last data in, is a rotten egg, so to speak, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's it's as slow as the slowest query, right? So that's why we're we've been working with uh, Microsoft on optimized file formats and really speeding up the core engine of Hive in the community to um, make sure that those use cases are blazing fast. So that's why our Stinger initiative. 100x performance yep. on Hive is what we're after here. We're going to bring you back on the cube later for another segment, but you know we're getting we're under a lot of time pressure because yep, no of worries. the keynotes we're getting. Over. But I want to ask you one final question. And this is kind of more of a uh, of a 20 mile stare because there are a lot of CIOs in our in our audience and and also developers, right? So what EMC is basically saying is, hey, cross this bridge with us. We, you know, we'll take care of you. You know, and don't look behind the curtain, but we you know we got you covered on SQL. And you know, I like their announcement, but my my only criticism of it, it felt like they're making the horse and buggy faster, okay? And, uh, and that's great today in data warehousing, but one thing that we've been talking about in theCUBE and, and with Wikibon and SiliconANGLE is the new use cases, those new questions, those new data resources that are emerging aren't SQL, um, they're new applications, it's data as code, uh, a term we coined today, and, and one thing that, that's interesting is I haven't heard from EMC is what their plan is outside of SQL, so I want to ask you specifically to talk about the one point of view. If you're a CIO and you're an enterprise and you're investing in the future, mm -hmm. business value is on the table right now, it's the number one conversation, not making data warehousing faster or a few purpose-built queries. I need to be positioned for the future, so does the EMC bring that to them? Um, what, can you comment on that? Intel's out there as well. They don't want to foreclose the future. So what's your point of view on this new future? So, um, and, then, and then we'll wrap it up after exactly. that. Exactly, so I think uh, taking a point of view where you're allowing all the different flowers of access to bloom will win out in the long term, right? So your point is the SQL sort of use case is fine, but what about the platforms who are inventing a new way of just visualizing on top of that? Um, or the SaaSes who are finding ways of running their analytics in the Hadoop stream directly. Um, they're not traditional SQL use cases, right? But they are going to deliver very targeted enterprise value to the, uh, to the customer, and that's a very interesting uh, value proposition to unlock. 
Uh, um, and so, it, like I said, SQL's the hot thing right now. Real time, other yeah. alternative patterns are going to be emerging. Yeah. You know, in it's not uh, big the next data. It's so. not big data. It's big answers. But it's also, yep. which was one of the things that they talked about, which I liked. But also, one thing that they didn't talk about, what we said on the cube yesterday, it's not. It's about new answers and the right answers. And that's, I think, what's interesting in the business value. And that's going to be, I think, the future of of the data platform. So. Um, competitive space, final comment will break is, what's your take on the whole competitiveness and, and what's Hortonworks going to do to compete? Um, so, uh, it's clearly a, an important market. Uh, so that's clear out of a lot of the competitive, competitiveness. What we're going to do to compete is, we're going to stick to who we are. When we look ourselves in the mirror, we, we, we represent a community-driven Hadoop platform and integrating it with existing enterprise systems and solutions and we feel strongly that if we stick to that knitting, um, we'll win in the long run. This is not a sprint, it's long distance running. <laughs> okay, uh, Hortonworks uh, talking about the response to all the competition and different approaches. We'll be right back with our next guest. Uh, thanks for coming on, Sean Connolly, Senior VP of Corporate Strategy at Hortonworks. We'll be right back. Yep.